You're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. You can find us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text at 252-582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right. We want to help you guys help us keep the conversation moving forward. You can support the show. You can share it online with your friends and family. Leave us a good five-star review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a couple of links right there in the description so you can do just that. The verse of the day today is coming to you from Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, verse 8. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. That is the promise that God gives to us. There's also another verse that I love that reminds us of that. There was a, I don't know if you remember this, Ryan, but there was a thing a while back where we were like, can we please stop saying that we found God? That's not biblical. God finds us. And then you come to verses like this where he says, if you seek God, you're going to find him. Yeah. I I remember that always used to annoy me when people would say that. Mm -hmm. There's another one. It's in Proverbs. I can't remember the the reference. Maybe David, if you want to look it up or somebody, but it was, uh, I love those who love the, who love me and those who seek me, find me. Yeah. Which means this, that it is an active participation in, in the Christian walk. You don't save yourself. Right. But you you do actively seek God. And that that's how salvation happens. You ask God, who are you? Yeah. You know, I want to know who you are. I want, I, you, it starts with that desire. Well, we've said this on the show before, but the Christian life is not a passive thing. It's not something that happens to you. It's something that you have an active part in. Right. No, you don't purchase your own salvation, but you're, the Christian life is worked out in the doing. It's mm-hmm. worked out in seeking after God. It's worked out in praying. It's worked out in chasing after his righteousness because mm-hmm. he, Jesus is reminding people here in this passage, whoever seeks and seeks correct Directly, we'll find it. That's right. Proverbs eight seventeen was the verse I referenced earlier. Mm-hmm. Shout out to David. And shout out to the Date the Word app. Yep, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. Shout out to the Date the Word app as well for sponsoring this episode of the Clearview Today Show. You can download that on your iPhone or your Android right now for 100% free. Every single day connects today's date to God's Word with the hope of making it more memorable for you. That's right. Ryan? Yes. You're back. I'm back. You're back. He's back, I'm baby. Back. Yeah, yeah, baby. You're back from uh, from from not camp. Not I keep wanting to say camp. Camp. It's not camp. Not we camp. made that mistake throughout the weeks. You were. It wasn't camp. It mission was mission trip. trip. Mission. Mission trip. How was it? It was excellent. Tell us about it. It was excellent. So we, about. you know, we go up in the mountains uh, at Fruitland Baptist Bible College. Shout out to Fruitland. Um, in Hendersonville, North Carolina. Beautiful up there. It's kind of like tucked away up in the mountains enough that you mm-hmm. feel like you're removed from civilization. So there's not busy traffic or anything. Mm-hmm. You hear the birds chirping when you wake up in the morning. It's gorgeous. Right. Um, and so all week long, we talked about what it means to be an influencer, mm-hmm. how Christ has called us to be the salt and light of the earth. And that happens not on a mission trip where we're tucked away out of reality, right. but it happens when we're inserted into our context, into our culture. And we trace that through the lives of eight different individuals through scripture, um, for everybody from uh, Joseph and Joshua to Esther and Paul and learn what it means to, you know, improve the context into which God has called us. Yeah. There's a lot of things where like we're, we're always, um, encouraged or pushed, I would say to be influencers right. on social media. Right. That's a, that's a thing. You're, you're a social media influencer, which means really you just show people your supposedly great life yeah. and they're supposed to envy you enough to want to emulate your life. Right. And that's what being an influencer is. But I, I love that because it's some, it's language that they use. They yeah. know, they understand, mm-hmm. but it's wrapped in that biblical truth of right. being an influencer. Absolutely. And that's what God, that's what God has called us to do yeah. is not to be influenced by culture, but to change the culture around right. us. Anything, uh, anything Anything fun happen? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Anything, How much I was, time do you have? Well, I was just here, so I had a lot of time on my hands. You had a I lot of just, time. Yeah, it was just kind of like you were just here by yourself, watching the hours I tick missed by. You. I, I missed, missed you. Too, I missed. I missed, I missed, I missed you when we were up in the mountains. I missed, I missed being well. in the studio and what, recording. What was one of the uh, What was one of the highlights? Oh yeah. man, one of the highlights for me was when we work uh, with teenagers is a lot of nonsense. So. One of the things that always, it, it makes me laugh, but I always love it every single year is how seriously they take like their team names. So every every D group, uh, we encourage them to uh, come up with an identity and a, like a team chant or cheer or something. Like when we go visit Rec Time, shout out to Nick, who is one of our engineers uh, who ran Rec Time for us. Um, when we go to Rec, you know, it's all about team spirit. It's yeah, all about yeah. who's the most hype. So you go out there chanting about you know how you're gonna like mess people up for Jesus and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, we had all kinds of team names. We had the Anglerfish, okay, because they live in salt water but they have a light, so they're salty and lit. Okay, okay. Um, we had the uh, Ding Dang Disciples. All right, I like um, that. Like I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for these Ding Dang Disciples. <laughs> well, um, got away with what? Uh, who knows? My sin, I guess. Who knows? <laughs> um, we had. Gosh, what was another one? We had the NBA, uh-huh. uh, which was doesn't stand for National Basketball Association. It stands for Noble. Boys allowed because that was an all-girl all girls. All girls, okay, okay. 
Uh, so yeah, just a lot of fun. Wow. A lot of fun hype team name chance and stuff like that. It's always fun. Awesome. Well, let's talk about it later on the show. We're going to bring Dr. Shy in and uh, and maybe uh, kind of get his take on how, yep. how everything went. Absolutely. I love it. Make sure you guys stay tuned after this commercial break. We'll be right back. Hey, what's going on, listeners? My name is John. And I'm Ellie. And we just want to take a second and let you know about Dr. Shaw's new book on the market right now called Can We Recover the Original Text of the New Testament? Boy, that is a long title. (laughs) True, but it's a very simple message. The original text of the New Testament is not only attainable, but there are lots of different ways that scholars go about discovering it. There's a lot of people out there saying that the original text is lost forever or that it's hopeless to actually try to find it or that there's many texts of the New Testament. But alongside Dr. David Allen Black, Dr. Shaw has actually compiled papers from some of the world's leading experts in textual criticism, including one written by himself on various methodologies for extracting the original text. And listen, if you're interested in textual criticism, This book is a great introduction to the field. You can pick up your copy on Amazon or you can buy it from our church website. That's clearviewbc.org. We're going to leave a link in the description box so you can get your copy today. Love that. Ellie, let's hop back in. Let's do it. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text, 252-582-5028. That's right, and we're here live once again in the Clearview Today studio with Dr. Abadan Shah, who is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. This is usually reserved for our perma guest, Nicole Shaw, because I'm so happy to see you. I'm so glad to give you a welcome back, thank my friend. You. Welcome thank back, you, thank Dr. You. Dr. It Shaw. It is good to be home. Ryan is back from not camp. Not camp. Not camp. He's back from uh, but you kept calling it camp mission trip. I was calling week. it camp, yeah, all yes. last week. Did you was... straighten him out? I well, tried actually to. was calling I've it vacation, to. but it wasn't vacation. Yeah, no it wasn't, it wasn't vacay. It wasn't no. staycay. No. It was not camp. No. Uh, mission. You are on the mission. Mission trip. But not, not on mission. I think that's a Mormon thing. Yeah, not yeah. that. Not that. No, we were all on the, nothing with Mormons. <laughs> nothing with, there was nothing to do with Orlando. Mormons. None of that. No, none of that. Uh, no, we just got back from the mission trip. It was an amazing week. It was incredible. We had a team of 70 people up in the mountains serving and painting and doing yard work and construction, and it was a lot of fun. It's crazy how a mission trips are always amazing. They're always spectacular. They're never mid. Like, you never hear someone get back from a mission trip. They're like, it was, it was fun. You got back from a mission trip. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just never. That's not a good look for anybody. Yeah, like, and it's also bad radio, too. It's like, we, yeah. <laughs> we just came back from a mission fine. trip. It was fine. It was fine. Yeah. No, it was good. We had a great <laughs> yeah. time. It was a lot of fun. I, uh, yeah, well, anyway, we don't need to hash that out again. Dr. Shaw, we're, we're, um, we're glad to have Ryan back. Yes, and um, he didn't are. betray anybody. You, he didn't leave anybody high and dry. Yeah, you were a little... I mean, the, the last phone call I remember amidst the chaos mm. was you were a little forlorn. Oh, I'm surprised you remember it. Uh, I'm me, surprised you Honestly, remember. I'm surprised I remember anything <laughs> from that week. Yes. Yeah, you were a little uh, down in the dumps there, buddy. Listen, I am glad that, that you're back. And we've been talking a lot about how God can um, how, can guide you in this Christian walk. Right? Yeah. And in fact, guide, I think I'm taking over the... Um, guide you when you feel like people have turned their back on you. Right. But, you know, <laughs> finding and, and discerning his will in our sure, lives sure, sure. Is, is just yeah. a good part of kind of circumventing that. Right. I don't know how, but I know that it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm confident that that's the case. In light of that, Dr. Shaw, we're talking about guidance. You know, we're, we're walking through this series and what it means to pursue God's will for our life. What, uh, what encouragement do you have for our listeners and viewers today? If you're struggling with direction in your life, if you're struggling with guidance in your life, please pray. Mm. Prayer is powerful. Whatever is on your mind right now, whatever is on your heart right now that you're struggling with, you're confused about, you keeps, keeps you up at night, puts you in a bad mood all day, Pray. Yeah. Take it to God and say, God, I don't know how to handle this. I don't know how to handle this person. I don't know how to handle this situation or this sin in my life or this this um, worry that I have or this um, this new direction that you're taking us. God, help me. And God will answer you. It'll, it may take some time, but he will never leave you hanging. He will answer mm-hmm. you. He will guide you. Yeah. So trust him. But talk to him. Amen. How often have you talked to people who are struggling with finding God's guidance in a particular situation? Like, man, I really wish God would just tell me what I need to do or where to go. And you ask them, well, have you prayed about it? And they look at you like, yeah. why, why would See, I have done that? Because they think God knows my heart. Mm-hmm. So he knows what's in my mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
he should just answer me and just show me because he knows what I'm going through. Mm. But there's something about prayer. Prayer is found in the first book to the last book of the Bible. Mm. From Genesis to Revelation, Old and New Testament, you find prayer. You find it in the narrative sections like Genesis, Exodus. You find them uh, find it in, in prophetic sections like, um, um, uh, and I'm just talking about the Old Testament right now, in, in the historical books like Joshua and Judges and Samuel and the prophets. You find it in poetic literature mm-hmm. uh, like Psalms, in the wisdom literature like Proverbs, and then you go to the New Testament, again, narrative like the Gospels, um, history like Acts epistles like Paul's letters, John's letters, Peter's, and then, of course, even the the apocalyptic literature, prophetic, I would say, more mm-hmm. like, Revelation. It's also about the prayers of the saints that rise up to God. Mm-hmm. So prayer is something that is found throughout the Bible, and it's God telling you, talk to me. You don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to go away to do that. You can you can talk to him wherever you are and say, God, I need your help. Mm. I need your guidance. And he will answer you. He always has. What I love about that, and, and I just had I just thought about it as we were sitting here kind of talking about it. People will always say, you know, you have to talk things through because when you talk it through, then the answer just kind of comes to you or you're able to to kind of suss out and untangle everything. But what I love about prayer is that the more you talk it out, God is the one who untangles it for you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? God yes. is the one, yeah. like you just said, he's going to answer you. There's yes. never been a prayer that just he's just like, I'm just going to completely yeah. let and, you figure that one out. And he uses different means to answer us uh, or to guide us. Sometimes he uses our emotions because mm-hmm. sometimes people think emotions are evil and terrible. And of course, we tell you, don't trust your emotions. Emotions are the shallowest part, as, J- as uh, J. Sidlo Baxter used mm-hmm. to say. Mm-hmm. But emotions are also used by God when we submit our emotions to him. That's right. Mm-hmm. So he will help you even through your emotions. He'll guide you. Circumstances, mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. things begin to line up or doors begin to open or certain doors begin to close. And then, of course, mature Christians. Mm-hmm. He uses people who are godly, people who are not perfect, but they are walking with God. And they will say things to you, whether they say things to you in person or they will say things to you through devotions. Like I, I read devotions every morning, mm-hmm. different books. Uh, and I'm working through one right now. And this morning, as I'm having this struggle or I'm talking about this thing with Nicole and I'm like, you know, how, how are we going to handle this? Or what are we going to do? And there's a paragraph in my devotions that was exactly what I needed to hear. Mm. And I had just read that. And then we've been talking about this. And the Holy Spirit reminded me, remember what you just read? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I did. Wait, that that was given to me by God for this situation. Mm-hmm. That's right. He is guiding me. He is actively guiding me. Mm-hmm. And that was a great eye-opening moment for me mm. that he used a mature Christian from like three, 400 years ago to That's speak to me. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a fantastic to speak to point. Me. That's why devotionals are great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we talk about that, you know, when you when you read God's word, obviously God speaks to you through reading his word, but in list, in listening, reading devotionals and listening to pastors and listening to your pastor speak, I mean, that's God speaking to you through another human being, another and, godly mm-hmm. individual. And it's not just that God guides people who are spiritually on top of their discipline, just like you, they've done all the right things, they've said their prayer, do the devotionals. It's not That doesn't make those people the spiritual elite, you know right. what I'm saying? It's right. not that God's guidance is just for them. If you And I like how you said it, it's for those who humbly submit. Yes. I've been doing something in my devotions that I think has actually done me a bit of uh, harm, which is I've been, I've been listening to them while I drive, and I think I'm going to stop. Because I'm not humbly submitting. I'm mm. just cramming it in where I can get it. Mm. Yeah. And I don't yeah. and I, I don't think it's been I've been doing it for a couple of months now and I don't think it's been doing me a whole lot of good. Because mm. I don't feel <laughs> you know, I don't feel the same as when I actually take time in the morning before yeah. I leave yeah. to actually mm. do them. Or at least have the time of prayer where you sit down and you pray. Yeah. And I know there are people who have a busy schedule, they have kids. Uh, you know, little kids or they, they have just a dis- difficult season of their life, busy season in their life. And so they feel like, I'm, I'm just going to do this on the way. And that's fine. It's okay to do that. But I hope you will also balance that out on days like Saturdays, mm-hmm. that you will take the time to sit down, not just driving, not just looking in the mirror or looking in the, through the windshield or whatever. Sit down and uninterrupting, uninterruptedly pray mm-hmm. and read 
and read the Bible, read the devotions, and talk to God. Yeah. yeah. There's something to be said about setting that time aside. That's true. And you really, once you do it and then you stop, you feel it. Yeah. You know, you, you, you oh, see absolutely. There's, a, there's a huge yeah. difference. Oh, yeah. Yes. And and maybe maybe that's why a lot of these decisions are not coming to fruition. Maybe yeah. that's why I don't feel guided. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's one person who we would think did not need a devotional life. He did not because he was connected mm. to God. Of course, he was the second person and is the second person of the Godhead, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when he was on this planet Earth in human flesh, walking about, touching lives, fulfilling prophecies, and and ultimately doing what he came to do, which is give his life for us. But while he was in that process, he spent time in prayer. He mm-hmm. talked to his father. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we know that the answer came, and he had that sense of guidance, because Mark chapter 2, verse 8 says, But immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Hmm. Now, what I want us to focus on is that one little line, when Jesus perceived in his spirit. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like people will use that and be like, well, Jesus doesn't really perceive anything because he knows Right. So he doesn't have to be discerning. He just knows. Yeah, like his omniscience. He like, knows. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like and I, I don't know why Christians do this. I think I've done it in the past, but we've talked about his dual nature and how that plays in, but people feel like Jesus has an unfair advantage. Like right. I know I'm supposed to be like Jesus, but I can't. So any <laughs> example where he gets it right, you could always just say, Well, he's God. Right. 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 No, there's something more there. Perceived in his spirit means he had a sense of guidance. Mm-hmm. He was guided to know what was about to happen next. Mm -hmm. And the same way he was guided by his father, remember he he humbled himself, Philippians chapter 2, limited himself. Mm -hmm. He never stopped being God. He did not throw away his attributes. He did not do that. He just simply chose to temporarily limit himself. Mm -hmm. But he was still fully God at all times. Mm -hmm. Um, But in that limitation that he set upon himself, he still sensed the guidance of his father. Mm. And since he is not only our savior, but he's also our model, he's also our life, we too can be guided. Mm -hmm. We too can perceive in our spirit what God is telling us to do. Wow. How how does that happen? How does that, I mean, I know if we've talked about prayer and, uh, and devotionals and stuff, but how do you, I guess, how do you see it manifest when you say, okay, God is guiding me to do this? Well, first and foremost, we need to realize that when we talk about guidance, we're not just talking about guidance between right and wrong, but we're talking about guidance between good, better, and best. Mm. Hmm. Good point. Let's clarify that. And I know our listeners and viewers are like, okay, what did you just say? We are not talking about guidance between right and wrong. We are talking about guidance between good, better, and best. So I don't have to ask God's guidance. Should I lie on my resume? Should I like rob this bank? Yeah. <laughs> no. God guide no. me. <laughs> guide me in this decision. God's Father. word has given us everything we need for life and godliness. <laughs> right. So make sure you understand that the Bible is very clear on b- good, bad, ugly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't do the bad things. Right. Don't right. do the ugly things. Sin is sin. You don't need the Holy Spirit to convict you regarding adultery, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> regarding lying, That's regarding cheating, regarding murder, regarding murdering somebody's uh, <laughs> uh, um, reputation. Yeah. No need to perceive in your spirit. <laughs> I just really need God's guidance as to whether I should step out of my marriage and then kill this person. Yeah. Oh, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> or should I go to church? Or should I share the gospel? Mm-hmm. Or should I give my tithes and offerings to God? No, you don't need guidance for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those are simply commands. It's a great commission. Mm, good point. Commit, mm-hmm. shun, which means go do it. What we're talking about here is something between good, better, and best. means the options are there. Mm-hmm. I want God to show me which is the better or the best option. Mm. Whether it is relationship, God, should I move along and in this relationship with this person, or should I just move along and go to somebody else? Or wait for someone, someone else. God, I need to know. It it also presupposes that Christians should want the best for their lives. Right. Yeah. Because if not, then it's just like, well, 
I don't really need God's guidance. I'll just settle with whatever he yeah, gives. Whatever he and many people me. do. Yeah. They're okay with it. Yeah. They don't stop to say, God, what is it that you have for me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If this is as good as it gets, then this is as good as it gets. I'm satisfied with this, this job, this life, this relationship. I'm okay with this. They don't ask the question, God, are you in this? Are you in this career? Mm. Are you in this college? Uh, a decision that I'm about to make. Let's talk about our students mm-hmm. going off to college. Is it between this college or this college? Mm-hmm. I need to go to college. I know that. Yeah. Or maybe college is not for you. Maybe it's a technical school. Maybe it's going to work at a job that's going to make you a professional in that field. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a uh, car repair. Maybe it's uh, uh, an AC uh, technician. Right. Maybe it is, um, uh, I, I don't know, some, some repair person. But your, your question to God is, God, should I work with this business or should I work with this business? Mm. This business is about 45 minutes away, but it's a Christian business. This business is only five minutes away, but I don't think the person I'm going to be working with is a believer. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to learn as well at the Christian business, but I'm going to learn a lot mm-hmm. at this business, which is not a Christian business. You see, life gets complicated. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. If everything was clear cut, you would say, oh, no, I'm going to take this one and this one and this because it all lines up here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if it does, by all means, take it. But many times it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. True. So how do I know which way to go? Yeah. So this is the type of guidance we're talking this about. This is the type of guidance we are referring to. And it comes, don't forget, it comes from being grounded in the Word of God. Mm, amen. True. In other words, the more we are in the Word of God, the more we can recognize the voice of God. Because hmm. that's the only way we can really know His mind and His heart is to right. be in, in His Word. When you're in the Bible, that's when you hear God. So when you hear God in your heart, this job versus this, or this person, not this one, as your life partner, or uh, this career, or this education, or this, this, how do you know is God leading you? Mm Mm-hmm is when you are in the word, you can recognize. That, that's mm-hmm. that's a great point to make because we were talking about devotions earlier and it's not like you sit t- there mm-hmm. and you take time to do those devotions so that God will be pleased that you follow the rules. Right. It's like, all right, because you did that and you showed me respect, I'm going to help you out. Mm-hmm. It's you're learning how to hear him. Mm-hmm. Yes, because yeah. he's yeah. speaking. Mm-hmm. He's speaking in your heart. He's speaking through people. He's speaking through circumstances. You just cannot recognize in the plethora of voices you feel confused and say, I don't know. I don't know. Is it my emotions? Mm. Is it just my intuition Mm -hmm. or is it really God? Yeah. Am I forcing myself to think what I really want versus what God really wants? I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the word on a consistent basis, humbly submitting yourself to what the word has to say, you will know. This is a really like (laughs) obscure kind of esoteric example, but it just makes sense to me. Like, like because we're so, sound minded i'm thinking of like all the noise that's in our hearts and our minds and in the world and like there's just constantly voices but like a lot of like we because we do the radio show a lot of like modern soundboards they have where you can put on headphones and you can just solo a channel mm. and i can just hear that like like chad does it when we're our sound guy does it when we're doing worship he's like man something's not sounding right he'll solo different channels and in the headphones he can just hear that and i'm thinking about like <laughs> this idea of a guy like put sitting down and there's so many voices like sin in the world and doubts and all this stuff and you put the headphones on and that's doing your devotion you just solo that channel and yeah. God yeah. You begin you know, to go, speaks okay, to you. Yeah. These voices sound the same. I think it's the same person mm-hmm. talking to me. Mm-hmm. Not, I'll give you an example. Sure. When I was in college and when I first came to America, uh, mom and dad would call me. They knew the whole time that America is about 10 and a half hours behind mm-hmm. India, but it didn't matter to them. So they would call me. And it would at be all at all hours of the night? Two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> wow. Yeah, 2 30 in the morning. <laughs> And they forgot or they just didn't care? I I don't think they cared at the time. <laughs> they were like, we just want to talk to you. It's 10 o'clock yeah. in the morning. Go ahead and call him. Can you not yeah. just wake up? <laughs> just wake up a little bit. Yeah. That was your mom talking to your dad, you think? Probably. <laughs> just call him. It's, 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 it's okay. It's, it, I think it's maybe just 11. He's studying. You know. <laughs> and it's one thirty, two o'clock in the morning. And they would call and I would be like, hey. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, everybody okay? Oh, we just wanted to talk to you. What time is it over there? <laughs> Guys, it's 1.30, 2 o'clock <laughs> in the morning. Oh, we, we woke you up. We're so sorry. I'm like, oh, it's okay. Do you have a roommate? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, the phone ringing. Right. Yeah. So they're like, oh, well, 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 so what we're going to talk to you about was, uh, so this happened and that happened. <laughs> and they're very sweet. Usually it was like, hey, we're sending you money kind of thing. So it was not like they were just like random talk. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, hang on one second. And I would take the phone. We had a long cord. You know, back in the day, there's no cell phone. Yeah. It was 1991. And I would walk out of the room <laughs> in, the, in the hallway at night at 1.30. You would see once in a while somebody who's still up studying yeah. would walk down the hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. You know. <laughs> was it like the, one of the corded phones like mounted on the yeah. wall with the wire, with the coiled yeah. wire? And That's you'd walk funny. out and it's in the dark. There's no <laughs> flashlights. It's yeah. just like stumbling through. Yeah. And then get outside and your, your roommate's like, <sighs> Oh, mm. <laughs> like you're waking people up. <laughs> now again, the hallway, and now there's nobody in the hallway, so it's like booming sound. Uh-huh. It's like, uh-huh. hey, so it comes out like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys can be calling me at like two o'clock in the morning. Okay, but uh, thank you for calling. <laughs> and and so they would call, and I would same thing as like, what time is it? Like, oh, it's two o'clock. Still two o'clock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then he, something began to happen. I began to, um, you know, they were not calling me every week. Right. Because they were sort of like, oh, he'll be fine. Everything yeah. is good. So they would call me once a month or once every other month or something like that. And my voice was also changing. Mm. I mean, I, I came here when I was 17. Mm-hmm. Now I'm 18, I'm 19. And also, I began to pick up a Southern accent. Mm-hmm. My roommates were from the South. Mm-hmm. And, and so they had a way of talking that in time, my English accent began to change. So then they would call. And it was more like, uh, hey, um, hello, we want to talk to Abidon Shah. <laughs> yeah, it's me. It's me. Oh, you sound so different. Wow. <laughs> I gave a long illustration, but yeah. <laughs> like the point is, yeah. the further you go without talking, the harder it is to recognize. That's a great point. Mm-hmm. Voice. Yeah, great point. It's so also point. the voice of God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, God wants us to be grounded in his word. Jesus said repeatedly in John 14, 15, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, mm-hmm. but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Amen. Mm-hmm. I love it. And then 1 Corinthians two twelve says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. That's right. So that we may know the things that have been freely given to us by God. So the spirit helps us as we are in the word. The Holy Spirit helps us know the things we have been freely given by God. That's right. There's so much more of an active participation on our part. So many times I feel like we're we're sort of tricked or maybe we trick ourselves into this mindset of just sitting back and waiting for God to loud booming loudspeaker from heaven Mm -hmm. tell us what to do God just tell me what to do Mm -hmm. but he he is telling you what to do it's just a matter of do you have the ears to hear it right 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 and to develop the ears get into the word of God Mm -hmm. but also I would add get into prayer Mm -hmm. start praying Mm -hmm. Uh, prayer is how we ask God for what we need but prayer is also how God sends the answers to our needs. That's a good point. Prayer is asking and receiving, mm-hmm. asking and listening. Mm-hmm. One of the things that you told me to do uh, when I first started coming here was, because, you know, I, I had a prayer life, but it was, you know, I'd been saved maybe six, seven years. You know, I was still kind of an immature Christian. And one of the things that you you told me to do is after you pray, just sit. And listen. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like you're going to hear, like, if I wait long. It's like not like a cheat code or something yeah. where you waited that long, now the voice comes. Yeah. But you learn how to listen. You're right. teaching yourself how to listen yeah. to That's God. right. So that when he does speak to you, you have more of an assurance. Yeah. That's right. And and it's it's one of those things where I always expected literally to hear that audible voice, like, all right, you've waited long enough, here it comes. Yeah. But then just, like, the more mature you get, you just start to become more and more, not comfortable in the silence necessarily, but you just... It's hard to explain. It's hard to put it into words. You just know how to listen. Yeah. Listen differently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, more than just so. waiting to hear it with your ears. It's just you listen with your heart. You mm-hmm. listen with your with yeah. your spiritual sense. You know, Bible talks about this in the Old and the New Testament, this aspect of listening in prayer. Mm-hmm. For example, Exodus 33, 13, this is where Moses said, he said, now, therefore, I pray. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, he's praying. Mm-hmm. If I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way. 
Isn't that nice? There's, there's, so there's a response coming. Yeah, he knows show me something. now your way that I may know you, that I may find grace in your sight. Mm, amen. James says in James 1, 5, if, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. Asking of God means prayer. Who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Mm. So many, many times those answers come in prayer. You say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to handle the situation. God says, not right now. Yeah. No, no, but I need to go and handle the situation now. God says, not right now. Yeah. Not right now. This is not the time. What happens when you go ahead and do it? It's, it's the, oh, yeah, it's yeah. a big mess. It's a mess. Yeah, you're left scrambling. Yeah. And then you, uh, you know, we talked about regrets and things like that uh, at our lunch today. Mm-hmm. But if you go back and think, yeah, God was telling me, mm-hmm. not right now, this is not the best. Yeah. This is not the best. Now, you did handle the situation, but it didn't turn out to be right. the best decision. That's right. right. But if you had listened to God's voice in prayer, um, you would have known not right now. Okay, God, it doesn't make sense. I want to go ahead and handle it, get it off my plate. I don't want to be up tonight thinking about this. But you keep telling me not right now. Okay, not right now. I'll handle it tomorrow. And what do you find? Wow. You just averted a big problem. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You know, Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So mm-hmm. in prayer, the Holy Spirit begins to make intercession for us. That's this right. is beautiful. It is. And so um, pray, ask God, but then sit back and listen to what he's saying to you. Amen. Yeah. So good. So helpful for us in learning how to pray and learning how to hear God speaking to us. If today was helpful for you, write in and let us know, 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Don't forget you can partner with us financially on that same website. Scroll to the bottom, click that donate button, and let us know it's coming from our Clearview Today Show family. Lots of great content coming your way this week. Make sure you guys stay tuned. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.